it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we are going to be making a thank you card using this gorgeous stamp set Rainbow of Happiness from Stamping Up and also these beautiful papers also from Stamping Up. Now I wanted to do a rainbow but I didn't want to do a traditional sort of colours on the rainbow so unusually for me but I actually went and found the papers first normally I end up sort of stamping the colours that I like and then I can't find papers to work but I actually did it the other way around so I found these beautiful papers and then I radiated out from that with what colours went with the papers uh, etc so I hope you enjoy and let's get crafting so I decided to start off by stamping my rainbow and I'll put up on the screen the names of the items that I'm using and the colours and everything for you. This is just a plain piece of white card that I'm using and I'm starting off on the inside piece and working my way out. There's only four layers on our rainbow so when you pop it down you don't need a stamp platform for this. It does make it always easier to stamp if you have a stamp platform but it isn't necessary it's a fairly simple stamp and when I was sort of fiddling around trying to work out my colours and the order and everything I actually stamped this and I just used a block and it worked absolutely fine so, and so you shouldn't have any difficulty as I said I'll put all the colours up on the screen and also when relevant I'll put sizes up for you however it is definitely worth going over to my blog post because it will tell you what the products are with links but also there'll be a ton of photographs so do make sure you take a look at the link down below this video and click on that to go on over to look at the blog post so I then decided that I want to put the sentiment on now this was a sentiment from a different stamp set and I decided to use this sort of kind of almost like a dirty yellow it was a, a strange color but I felt like it it went with the papers you can see at the side of this bit of paper there's like a well and my hands kind of over it but there's like a bit of yellowy tone just at the edge of that which is why I'm cutting this down just a little so it goes on the front of a six by six card so I'm cutting it down to five and three quarters square but you'll notice what I did was I cut it on the opposite side of the yellow so that I kept all of that yellow on the card so I'm going to cut two pieces to, to that size because I want one for the inside and one for the outside it's quite light paper it's, it's a nice paper but it's not super like it's not a card so sticking it down with a tape pen will be fine it will stay stuck it's not too heavy for that so I just literally put a ton of tape on the back and then as I said I'm popping some, uh, a piece on the inside I just thought it'd be really nice I say to you guys often that I like to do something on the inside even if it's just quite sort of not a lot but it even if it's just a piece of colored card that complements the front i think it just always looks nice just and makes it look finished and then i did the same on the front cut that down and stuck that down just flat and i think that paper is absolutely gorgeous you'll notice when i turned it over it was two-sided as well and it's a really really pretty set of papers and really really liked it now i thought it'd be fun to do a bit of embossing on here and i thought an embossed border rather than just doing a border with some ribbon around it i thought it would be kind of fun to do an embossed border i actually don't know what this uh, embossing folder is but there's so many that i like this and if you don't have a piece that's a, a embossing folder that's actually a border it doesn't matter just use one of your regular embossing folders as long as it's six inches across or down whichever way it doesn't matter because we're going to cut it anyway so you can easily cut yourself a strip and I would say it's about an inch and a half two inches no probably an inch and a half across that um for this border so if you're kind of not got a border die uh, embossing folder I mean then easy to use any one so then I'm cutting out a beautiful scalloped uh, label 
from Spellbinders here. And I did it on the white card first, and that's to go on the inside. And you can see that beautiful scallop around the edge. And then I'm going to do the same around my rainbow, which is why I wanted to make sure this was done and dry. And you can see now that it's dry, the colours have really softened down, which is why I tested it in this case. And I actually tested normally I just sort of do a little blob of the colours to see if I'm happy with them together. But in this instance, I actually stamped out the rainbow because I thought it was important to see how it would actually look when it was finished and I was really pleased. You'll also notice my little tip there that I always try to follow, angle your die as you go through your machine and you will preserve your plates. They will not bend as quickly. I've had these since brand new. In fact, none of my machines have had new plates, even my platinum has not bent and you can imagine I use them a lot so if you do this it will definitely make a difference so the next thing I did was cut my embossed piece down to size which is why I said if you had an embossing folder but it wasn't a border folder it would still work just fine and it's kind of like a honeycomb kind of design so if you want something similar to that that's kind of the name I, if you haven't got something but you're looking for something I would suggest that's the kind of thing that it is uh sort of would be labeled or named but i mean there's so many like this trellis is another sort of style similar i think i mean there's all sorts that are sort of similar style to that now this i don't know what i was thinking i was having a mad moment i didn't put my ribbon on before i put the glue it would have been a lot simpler to do this put a bit of tape down on the back of the um piece of card here and stick my ribbon down nice and firmly so it didn't slide about what's happened now is that the ribbon is sticking down into that glue but of course it's still wet so it's not holding tight across the front so what happens is and I don't know if I show this in the video particularly but it's really quite loose once I pop it on and what I ended up doing was actually cutting it on the front because I knew there was going to be that rainbow piece over the front and ended up having to then sort of stick the two ends down using some tape just to uh, sort of over the top of each other just to tighten that up because you can see there it's really quite loose now I don't know what I what was in my head but anyway if you're doing this then make sure you stick that down first because it will make it a lot easier you'll also notice I was using my numbered mat there because I wanted to make sure that the ribbon and the border was central so I was putting it at the three inch point of my card so then next I've got the plain white scalloped piece of die cut piece um, and that's to go on the inside now if you want you could wait be patient till the front is dry it really wasn't too much of a big deal as long as you're careful and don't sort of sort of bash it down too hard at the back it shouldn't move just be aware that it's there um, I don't know about you but I don't have patience to stand around and wait just because I need to put a piece on the inside perhaps it would have been simpler to do that first but you know why, why do things that are simple so then for the front I just put some foam on and then popped that down and what's quite good about this is that you can line your little points up on the two sides there with the ribbon so you can then make sure it's all nice and straight and all central so then the next thing I wanted was a little bow so you make your two little bunny ears cross them over tuck what the other one through the little hole tighten it and then hold your fingers over the knot and pull the thread if you hold your thumb thumb and finger over the knot in the middle it stops that getting as loose it will still loosen a bit but it doesn't get as loose as if you just pulled it without holding it and then you can just tighten it again pull the little tails again and just keep going till you get a shape now this came out pretty okay i mean it's it didn't need to be too fussy and again here i just used a bit of tape but later on i actually went under with a little bit of glue gel just to i decided that if I wanted to be sure that that was going to stay stuck and I got my glue gel out because I 
decided having done this part that actually I felt that I wanted to put some sequins on it just to add a little bit of something to it so in order to stick my sequins down I was using the glue gel so all I did was I just very carefully lifted up that bow which wasn't massively stuck down with that tape pen um it was okay but i just felt that it wasn't going to last at some point it was going to pop off so i then just took the tool which you're going to see in a minute that i used to put the glue gel down for these um sequins here it is there the little purple sort of dotty thing um and i just popped a bit of glue gel under that bow so here what i've done is i've selected a couple of st different colors of sequins so it's the lovely sort of minty green color and a peach and uh the two mint ones are slightly different there's sort of one that's a bit more see-through and the other one's slightly more opaque but it's just um similar enough that they sort of look complementary i like to go in odd numbers so i've put two there and one so that to make a group of three and then the same at the top corner there but you could even do like two in the top corner and just one sort of further down if you want i would always recommend groups of three i think it's just generally considered more aesthetically pleasing so again as i say just using that glue gel to stick it down but any wet glue will do um, it works really well and it just gives you that little bit of time to fiddle around to get the position right and I thought that looked really nice and I was really really pleased with just the simplicity of it really and the softness of the colours I thought it was really nice for a change to have that on a rainbow I just didn't want to do a standard sort of rainbow colour for a change now actually what I did do and you m will see in the photos is um, this was a card that mum was going to use to send uh for a friend so she you know, she's just obsessed with glitter so she did say i want some glitter on the rainbow so i went back later and put my um crystal stickles over the rainbow pieces so you will see that in the photographs it almost looks overpowering in the photographs because the light shines off it and makes it look much stronger but it is actually crystal clear so you can see the colors through so hopefully that will give you a kind of view of it but i think overall with or without the glitter i think it looks really nice i hope you agree thank you so much for watching do subscribe if you haven't already and give this a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Thanks again and I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.